Welcome to section 4.3, day one, concavity and points of inflection. Today's objective is to describe the concavity of a function. Concavity, the graph of a differentiable function f of x is concave up on an open interval a, b if f prime of x is increasing, if the derivative of the function is increasing on a, b. It is concave down on an open interval a, b if f prime of x is decreasing. So the derivative is decreasing on a, b. So we have a thing called a concavity test. The graph of a twice differentiable function f of x is concave up on an open interval where the second derivative, so f double prime x is greater than zero, and it's concave down on an open interval where the second derivative f double prime x is less than zero. So we take the second derivative. So what we do is we take the second derivative and find critical points. And then we make a sign chart using the critical points and the endpoints if there are any. So here it says, use the concavity test to determine the interval on which the graph of the function is a concave up and b concave down. So our first step is to take the derivative twice. So f prime of x is 6x squared minus 8x plus 7. And f double prime x is 12x minus 8. Set this equal to 0 to find our critical points. And we get 12x equals 8. You divide by 12, and x is 2 thirds. So we will make a sine chart. Here's 2 thirds. We need a point below and an x value above. So I'm going to take the second derivative at 0 and evaluate it. So we get 12 times 0 minus 8, which is negative 8. Again, all we care about is the sine, and it's negative. And f double prime of 1 is 12 times 1 minus 8, which is 4, which is positive. Because the sine changes on our second derivative, as we go through x equals 2 thirds, we have a negative sign, and then we get to 2 thirds and we go to a positive. Since our sign has changed at this critical point, it changes our concavity. Our, deriv our, our second derivative is negative, which means this is concave down here. This is concave up over here because it's positive. So we have concave up on the interval from 2 thirds all the way to infinity. And we are down from negative infinity to 2 thirds. Hopefully you'll notice from the definition when we do the second derivative test for concavity, this is on an open interval. Uh, we are not going to include the critical point like we did when we did increasing and decreasing. So for concavity, we have an open interval and we do not include the critical point when we did increasing decreasing, we did include the critical points in the interval. Be careful with that with your notation. If you were to graph this function, it would look something like this. It's a cube function and it would look something like this as you go through the origin. And it makes sense that it's concave down before you get two thirds and it's concave up when you get past two thirds. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is points of inflection. The points where f prime of x exists and the concavity changes are called points of inflection. On our last slide, we had the critical point two thirds and our concavity went from negative to positive as we crossed two thirds. So that was a point of inflection. So to find inflection points, we find the critical points of f double prime of x and test them on a sine chart. If the sine changes and our concavity changes, that means we have an inflection point. 
Here it says to find all points of inflection and list them as ordered pairs. So we are going to take the second derivative. So f prime of x is 4x cubed minus 12x squared. And then our second derivative, f double prime of x, is 12x squared minus 24x. We will set this equal to 0 to find our critical points. And when we do that, we get 12x, x minus 2 equals 0. So we have critical points at x equals 0 and x equals 2. So then we are going to use our sign chart. Here we're at 0, here we're at 2. And then we are going to plug in x values below 0, between 0 and 2, and above 2. And we are going to test them in our second derivative. To test these, we put in our values into our second derivative. So f double prime of negative 1 is 12 times negative 1 squared minus 24 times negative 1. And when you solve this, you get 12 minus, actually you get 12 plus 24, which is a positive f double prime of 1 is 12 times 1 squared minus 24 times 1. This is going to be a negative number. And then we have f double prime of 3, which is 12 times 3 squared minus 24 times 3. And 3 squared is 9. 9, this is 108. This is minus uh, 72, and we get a positive number. So now we have our sign chart. It's showing that at 0 and 2, our signs are changing from positive to negative and then from negative to positive. So at x equals 0 and x equals 2, we do have inflection points. So we need to plug in 0 and 2 to see what those points are, since it's asking them for ordered pairs. So f of 0, going back to our original function, we plug in 0, and we get 0 minus 0 plus 10. So we have 0, 10. We're going to plug in f of 2. And then we have 2 to the 4th minus 4 times 2 cubed plus 10. And when you do the math, you get uh, 16 minus uh, 32 plus 10. This is negative 6. So our point is 2, negative 6. So we have points of inflection at 0, 10, and 2, negative 6. Those are my points of inflection. And looking at this, we have concave up going into x equals 0, then we're concave down between 0 and 2, and then we're again concave up when we're greater than 2. So this is our second derivative test for our points of inflection. So here we have the graph of f of x, and it says where is the derivative equal to 0? Remember this f of x function is our position, f prime would be our derivative, so one of our slopes zeros. And we will find our slopes are zeros for our tangent. So it would be right here, here, and here. So we are at x equals, oh, and down here at c, b, c, d, and f. Where is f prime greater than zero? Where is our derivative of this? Where would our slopes be positive? Well, our slopes would be going up the hill to B, so from A to B. And then again from C to D. And 
And then again, when we get past F, so we're going from F all the way to the end, so union F H. That's where our derivative is positive. We are going up hills. Where is F prime less than zero? When is our derivatives negative? When is our slope negative? Well, that would be from B to C. And it's union with D to F. Now it says, where is F double prime equal to zero? This is a little trickier to see. Let me erase what's on here. So we have a clean graph. I'm gonna change my color to red. So it says, where is F double prime equal to zero? Where would the second derivative equal zero? Our second derivative equals zero, where we have what we call our inflection points, where our concavity changes. So we're just gonna eyeball this. So roughly right here on my graph, we are going to change from concave down to concave up. We're gonna do it again here between C and D. We're gonna do it again between E and F somewhere in here. So in these three spots, roughly, our concavity is going to change. And again, it's going to happen again right around in here. When you're looking at it, you'll see that it's changing. So if we're going to call these points x1, x2, x3, and x4, we can actually use g. So where is f double prime equal to zero? It's going to be at x1, x2, x3, and g. And it says, where is f double prime greater than zero? Where are we concave up? That's what's asking. So we're looking for concave up. Well, if we go between x1 to x2, that's concave up. And then we go between x3 and g, is also concave up. And then where is it concave down? Where F double prime is less than zero. So we're gonna go from A to X1. And then we're gonna go from X2 to X3. And then again, we're gonna be concave down when we get from G to H. When you look at a graph of F of X and it's asking us where the second derivative is zero, we're looking at where those concavities change. Then where F double prime is greater than zero, we have concave up. And where F double prime is less than zero, we are concave down. Here we have analyzing a graph of f prime of x. This is the derivative graph, and we are going back to where is f increasing. When f is increasing, it means we have to have a positive slope. So we are going to be looking at where f prime is greater than zero. So this is when f prime is greater than zero. So anywhere we're greater than zero, we are increasing. So that's happening all the way from A to E. So we are increasing from A to E. And then again, from G to the end of our graph, H. This is where we are increasing. Where are we decreasing? Well, we're decreasing when we're below, when we have a negative slope. So we are decreasing from E to G. And you'll hopefully notice that these are closed intervals for increasing and decreasing. And it says, where are the extreme values? Where is the derivative zero or undefined? Well, this is a derivative function, so we want to see where it crosses 
the x-axis and it crosses at x equals e and g. We're looking for when we change signs. So our slope changes sign at e and at g. So our extreme values are at x equals e, x equals g. One of those things to keep in mind is that when we're looking at graphs to understand what graph you're actually looking at, is it the f graph, is it an f prime graph, is it an f double prime graph? Make sure you're looking at what you're being shown. That is all for section 4.3 day one. Today we looked at concavity and points of inflection. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.